you're already a ballistic main or you're a new ballistic main looking for a guide to find out how to use ballistic to his fullest potential, that is exactly what I'm going to explain in this video. Now, if you don't know who I am, I am the number one ballistic on PC and I have been for over a year since around 5k kills. I've played ballistic since day one and I currently have 52,000 kills on him. And over this last year, over the course of him getting buffed and nerfed, I have come to understand his kit very, very well. And I would say if you are looking to get into ballistic, now is the perfect time. Ballistic has never been as strong as he is now and I think he is severely overlooked and extremely, extremely useful, especially in fighting. So without wasting any more of your time, I'm going to cover how you guys can get the most out of his kit. Now starting off first, we're going to talk about perks because I'm also going to include some perk tips when I talk about other abilities Ballistic has, so I think it's best to just kind of get that out of the way first. So let's explain what each perk is. The blue perks Ballistic has is Slingshot and Lasting Bullet. Now Lasting Bullet takes your tactical and triples the amount of time it is on the ground for. So if you shoot your tactical and it doesn't hit a player, it will exist in a certain spot for three times longer than it normally would. This is extremely useful and I'll explain why a little bit later. Slingshot is also the other one which increases your gun's level based on what armor you have. So if you have a blue armor, your sling gun will have all blue attachments. If you have a purple armor, your gun will have all purple attachments. That is where it stops though, it doesn't go to red or gold when you get a red armor. And the purple perks are extra bullet and speedy bullet. Now speedy bullet gives you around a two second speed boost when your whistler attacks attaches to a player, kind of like Bangalore's passive. Now extra bullet gives you an extra whistler charge to use, which means you get to use your whistler a lot more often, which is extremely handy. Now something I want to preface before I tell you what my go-tos are, is that all the perks are very, very viable. So if you want to experiment, it is completely okay, because I would say each perk brings something different to the table. So feel free to use what I use, but if you want to experiment, please do. I personally think these are the best. I've tried them all, and this is the one I have the most success with, and that is slingshot and extra bullet. Now slingshot is so good and I highly recommend because it essentially allows you to get more use out of your sling gun. Now, I will explain exactly more what the passive is if you don't really know in a little second, but it essentially takes your third slot, which Ballistic has, and allows you to put a wider range of guns in there because so many more guns are useful because prior to this perk, Ballistic Sling was very restricted to just being useful when Ballistic popped his ultimate and his sling gun turned gold. Now, you can have a purple flatline, a blue flatline, a purple R3, a purple R9. You can really get creative with your triple gun setup because of this perk. So something I will like to do is I will run an AR in my third slot and then two SMGs or an SMG and a shotgun in my primary and secondary so that I have that mid-range gun and then when I push up, I've got two guns I can use rather than just the one. SMGs are also good to put in the sling with combo with slingshot. If you are going to, I would highly recommend putting the Volt or your alternator in. The R9 and the car just really aren't great right now and it kind of sucks. It's a bit of a ballistic nerf in a way but all the other guns that are good make up for it and that's the one thing ballistic really capitalizes on the weapon meta and the slingshot just takes that to the next level so keep an eye on what is meta and what is not and make sure you're putting it in ballistic sling because slingshot really does elevate that one thing slingshot does in my opinion is really kind of takes away a level of rng if you're playing duos or trios you might not get the good attachments you want but if you put that gun in the sling and you have slingshot equipped you will get a 2x you will get those good blue and purple attachments for your gun which makes you a lot more stronger and more prepared for fights now i'll explain in a little bit what my top tier sling guns are there is a tier list which i will have a pinned comment in the comments of this video which gives a more in-depth reason to what my favorite to least favorite sling guns are which i think is definitely worth a watch if you want that sort of information i will go over that in this guide but not as in detail as in the tier list with slingshot you should definitely be using guns like the mozam p20 and re45 because the hammer points is a purple pop-up which means when you get your purple attachments you will get a hammer point mozam and p20 or re re45 in my opinion is the best of the three and mozam is second hammer points does increase flesh damage so it's extremely handy if you have one of those guns in your sling the re not only is the re one of the top tier sling guns full stop but having a hammer point re even when you're not in ult when you've got a purple armor is just very very handy to have and borderline op so i will discuss some more of those perks in a moment in combo with some of the abilities later on in the video but let's get on to the passive so what is ballistic passive so as i've just spent a good chunk of time explaining ballistic 
its passive is that he has a third gun which is called the sling and that can hold any gun other than care package weapons. Now my first piece of advice when it comes to ballistic sling is get used to the sling. Make sure to bind your character utility to something that is comfortable and easy for you to use. I'm on MK and I personally use 5 which is easy for me to get to and is now muscle memory and whenever I play another character it feels weird not to be able to press 5 and pull out a third gun. The more that you get used to handling 3 slots the easier ballistic becomes especially if you use slingshot because getting used to using your sling more often allows you to get the most out of this perk and it allows you to get into fights and bring out your sling gun with not as much of a struggle. At first I can understand it's quite an overwhelming thing to have 3 slots and to remember how to pull out your third gun but the more you use it the more you build up more game sense for ballistic the easier it will become and trust me this is a really important thing you need to learn how to do so even if it's just sitting in the firing range for a while and pulling it out or just getting into the battlefield and just getting used to using your sling gun is extremely handy. The next tip is whether you have slingshot or not, if your sling has better attachments than either of your primary or secondary guns, either because your gun is naked or because you have slingshot and you have blue attachments whereas your sling gun has purple attachments, make sure you're either utilising your sling gun when you're in fights because it has better attachments or if you would prefer to use your primary gun, make sure to swap your primary and sling slot. Say you have an RE45 which is purple in the sling but you only have a white flat line, make sure to switch them if you're trying to do some damage medium range because a purple flatline will do a lot more damage for you at that medium range than the RE will. And it's a very situational thing, but getting used to swapping your guns about is a very handy thing to do. Obviously, I know the attachments sometimes can fly off, which is a little bit annoying, but ultimately, I think it's worth it if you're in a situation where your primary gun, which is worse than your sling gun, could be more effective in a fight if it was in the sling. And in combo with slingshot, it's also very, very handy to make sure that you are just, in general, utilising your slingshot weapon. If your sling gun is a purple or blue gun, done make sure that you're using it you do not have to be restricted to your primary and secondary slots anymore make sure that you are aware of what situation you're in and if the sling gun is more viable then please make sure to use it when it comes to looting you can equip a sling gun or trade your current sling gun out for another by right clicking or the controller equivalent of right clicking in a death box rather than pressing the normal left click to trade your primary or secondary gun out so that is very handy you can just take a gun straight from a death box and put it in your sling or if a gun is on the ground if you press your character utility bind which like I said for me is 5, is the same button that if you look at a gun on the ground and press it will trade your sling gun for. Now in solos it doesn't really matter especially if you're landing hot because solos is a thing at the time that I'm recording this but in trios and duos you want to get into a habit if you're especially for landing hot to put your first gun straight in your sling and this is really important because even without slingshot your sling gun will always have white attachments which is extremely handy so it will have a 1x on it and it will have white mag and white stock everything that you could need which is extremely handy because you can then go off drop and fight people who have no mag no sight guns especially for guns like the spitfire you'll get a 40 round mag spitfire off drop with a sight on it and i think the spitfire iron sight is terrible so that's extremely extremely handy and you can just go melt people straight away because you essentially take an element of RNG out. So get into the habit of putting your first gun when you drop in the sling just in case you get into a fight. And then another little tip is just to make sure you carry a stack of ammo for your sling gun if it's not using the same ammo type as your primary and secondary gun, just in case. And this actually goes straight into the next tip, which is my old advice was not to get used to the sling as much. It was essentially to not build a bad habit of needing three guns every fight. However, I'm gonna explain in the playstyle section towards the end of the video a lot more why I think that is wrong, but just take it from me now, that was some wrong advice. A lot of legends have mad movement and ways to escape you have three guns, so just make sure to utilize them. Do not feel bad about needing three guns to win a certain gunfight. You can essentially play so aggressive and use all three guns to get your kill, whereas other legends couldn't play as aggressive because they do not have as many guns as you. So make sure you are using it and do not feel bad about that whatsoever and get used to using it in your fights. Now the final tip in the passive section for the sling is snipers, when you put them in the sling, will have a 2x on them by default, even without slingshot, which is extremely, extremely useful. Sentinel, charge rifle and longbow will all come with a 2x so if you're a sniper enjoyer make sure to put a sniper in your sling because even without slingshot you will have a good sight on it. Next let's get into the tactical. Now what is the tactical? Well it's called the whistler. What it is is it's a lock-on pistol that locks onto enemies and applies an overheat to them which gives them an overheat graphic on their screen and if they shoot enough of their bullets their gun will overheat and they will not be able to shoot for a second or so and it has a lot of uses. It is very situational and the more you use it the more you will find 
find different uses for it. And something I want you guys to keep in mind is I'm going to list a lot of different uses for it, and I don't want you to take just one or two and think, right, I will use those. Fizz whistle, all of them are extremely useful for all different kinds of scenarios. You could use three, four, five different ways of using his tactical. So if you need to come back to this video, make sure to watch this section over if you want to remember different ways of using his tactical, because it is one of the most undervalued abilities in Apex, I think. It has a lot more to offer than at face value. Now, in combo with the extra bullet perk, it is extremely useful because you can essentially use two pistols at once. Now, you can either pistol the same enemy twice and do extra damage to them, which is something you can do if you want to be mean and you want to get that extra damage in. However, it will not stack overheat damage if you put two whistles onto the same player. It will do 20 and then another 20 damage upon connecting to the player, but when it comes to overheating, they will not take double overheat damage, so do keep that in mind. And the tactical is very useful in 1v1s. It's a good habit to build up if you're pushing someone just to whistle them straight away. You know, you'll see a lot, if you go and watch my TTV video, you will see a lot of times I get into these close range gunfights and you will see missile locked on their screen because I am whistling them even though I'm in their face. It does extra damage and if they overheat their gun, it gives you a massive window to win that fight and do more damage to them. Ballistic is really good in 1v1s because of his tactical. So it's a really good habit to build if you're pushing someone, if you're in their face, send out that missile. It will lock on a lot easier because they take up more of your screen so it will e be easier to hit and it will be easier to lock on so yeah it's good to kind of build that muscle memory i think also the tactical is also really useful when trying to move up to somebody so if you're trying to get aggressive on somebody when you're trying to move up you know they can shoot you while you're trying to push well if you lock the pistol on and hit them well they're going to take damage if they shoot enough of their mag into you or it might stop them shooting you altogether so that is extremely extremely useful and if you have the speedy whistle perk it is even more useful if you're pushing up to someone and you whistle them you will get a speed boost which means you'll get to them even faster now i don't really use the speedy whistle perk but if you are a speedy whistle enjoyer keep that in mind that is also a very very good use of the tactical now next the tactical is also really good for controlling space holding angles where enemies might potentially peek you from you know stopping people from playing doorways stopping people from peeking you in general or if they do decide to pick you from that angle not only will you get a warning but they will get punished for that by having the overheat module on them so keep that in mind it's really good for controlling space in fights you will see me a lot of the time not just using it to attach onto a player but i will be using it placing it on the ground it's also really good to play the orb that it creates so if you're trying to push into a room queue ahead of you and then play the orb because it can also act as a warning to tell you if someone is near the entrance that you're trying to push or near a piece of cover you're trying to make it to but if they're not it's also really good because you can play that orb and it will punish any enemy that steps inside but it could also just stop them from peeking it all together which gives you an advantage so make sure you're using the tactical on the ground as well to control space so just to recap for that if you are healing or if you're trying to push into somewhere some piece of cover or a building you know either tactical ahead of you or if you're in that piece of cover or in that building tactical where you think the enemy could be coming because it could either stop them or punish them for peeking that angle in the first place now a smaller tip is the tactical is good at armor checking so if you're in the early stage of a fight you want to know what armor the enemy has just get the pistol to lock on shoot it at them and then you will know so that is a small tip that not many people talk about now all these are very useful providing you actually get the whistler to hit the enemy a lot of people will duck behind cover so how do you increase the success rate of the whistle actually hitting the enemy and that is the flick method the flick method is where you get the pistol to lock on and then you flick up or around a piece of cover which makes the whistler shoot in that direction then it will lock on and home in on the enemy which means it could go around the piece of cover the enemy is on and it gives you a higher chance of hitting them which gives you all the advantages that i've just mentioned before so it is really useful so please get used to flicking when you lock on with the enemy even if they're not around a particularly big piece of cover or they're not around a piece of cover at all do it just get used to it or even if they're on height if they're on height above you hold your tactical button out get it to lock on go like below them so they can't see you and then flick up it will definitely hit them it's very useful especially if someone's holding high ground on you that is probably the biggest tip of this whole video when it comes to this tactical make sure you're utilizing that now this is a bit more of a niche tip but when the enemy is hit with your tactical it makes quite a loud crackling sound it can allow you to make some more ballsy and aggressive players because not only could they be overstimulated overwhelmed by that sound but it means 
means that you can either go around, you can be more aggressive, you can either capitalize on that by being more aggressive or making a bit more of a ballsy play because it'll be harder for them to hear, so make sure to keep that in mind as well. And then one of the final pieces of advice is if an enemy is next to a piece of cover, what I often do, if they are like behind a box, I will cue the right side of the box or the left side of the box and then I will peek the other side. So that is a really good example of how you can be using it to control space and push up at the same time. It sort of combines two of the previous tips in one because you can either stop them from playing as much space or punish them for being in that spot in the first place. And then it means when you push them, when you swing them, you already have that whistle attached and you can start that one one with a pretty significant advantage. You'll see me do that a lot when an enemy is behind cover and I want to push up. So it's a good sort of way to bamboozle them as well because a lot of people might expect you to peek the way that you queued. But if you do the opposite, it can also confuse them and give you the advantage as well. Another tip for the tactical that I nearly forgot to mention is the ability to use it to outplay people on doors. If you are running away from an enemy and you're running towards the door, if there is a second to spare, something you can do when you're on the other side of the door is briefly open it and then place your tactical on the other side. This means if the enemy does try and kick down the door and try and immediately shoot you, not only will you have the advantage straight away because you can shoot them before they can shoot you, but also they could end up overheating which allows you to win the fight even if you're not exactly winning it straight away. Also if you're on the aggressive side, especially if you're on double doors, it can be really handy to place your cue right next to you and then break the door because again, it will hit them once the door has broken and it makes the 1v1 that you're about to have even better. As you can see there is an example on screen now of me doing exactly that. So they're all the different uses so far that I find myself using the tactical. I really would recommend getting to grips with all of them. But next, let's discuss the ultimate. Now, what is the ultimate? Now, Ballistics ult combos with his passive very well. It takes his third gun, it makes all the attachments gold, gives you a really good sight, and if one of those guns has a hop-up, it'll apply a hop-up to that gun as well. And then it will also give you increased movement speed when you're running with your gun out, fast reload, and infinite ammo. And you will get a golden gun, but your teammates will also get infinite ammo, movement speed and fast reload as well so you're extremely useful to the team in your ultimate which is really really cool so yeah that is the ultimate now when exactly should you be ulting use the ult at the start of a fight if you're confident you actually get to fight the enemy if they're in a spot that's hard to get out of and they can't really run otherwise you run the risk of the enemy stalling or running away and wasting your ult completely and i'm guilty of this quite a lot so don't be ashamed if this happens to you but what i often do is i will do my damage first and then i will move up with my ultimate so say I crack someone with an R301, I will then pop my ultimate and then run at them with my golden alternate or something like that. You have a higher success rate of getting the most out of it when you're pushing up, when you've done that initial bit of damage. However, if you do want to just enter a fight with your ultimate, make sure you're doing so if you know they can't escape. It is also okay to ult straight away if you're going to third party a fight. If you're running up to a place and there's already a fight going on, you can just pop your ultimate because you're already in the advantage situation anyway because you're third partying, so ulting is also very handy as well. But if you're in that fight your ultimate is also really good at countering third parties because you can do damage a lot quicker so when you finish the fight make sure you're vigilant for those third parties get an arm swap and then be vigilant for third parties because your sling will help you fight them a lot better than if you were just caught without it so make sure to be watching out for third parties and also discussing your teammates if you or your teammates get a kill it will add i believe five seconds to your ultimate timer so that goes for you and your teammate which is extremely extremely handy to know now also depending on how far into a 1v1 or team fight you're in it can actually be useful to either reload or not reload your sling gun so if the fight is towards the end and you've reached the end of your sling guns magazine i would actually just recommend pulling out your primary or secondary slot however if the fight is a little bit early on to the 1v1 or team fight i would actually just reload your sling gun because it is going to be way more useful than any of your other guns anyway and on the same topic of reloading you need to learn the flow of your fights because you can actually reload mid 1v1 while the enemy is peeking behind cover or just on the verge of running away or something where they're not exactly in your face just yet or if you have a little bit of movement you can slide and reload just something like that like if there is like a if there's like half a second or a second where there is no shooting or you dip back into cover just reload because a full mag is way more useful than half a mag so make sure you're learning the flow of your fights because there are a lot of opportunities where you could and should be reloading when you're in your altered state a lot of the time 
time if an enemy peeks behind cover if an enemy is bobbing and weaving from cover i will do my damage while they bob into cover i will reload and when they re-peek i've got another full mag to pump into them so let's get into probably what a lot of people want to know which are what are the best guns for the sling now what i'm going to tell you first is what guns actually get some unique buffs in the sling so when you ult with a rampage that comes charged which means you can break down doors and the gun is generally a lot better to use it's really fun to have a rampage in your sling and lure someone to a door and then break the door that is so fun especially because you probably weren't shooting them with a rampage in the first place because it's in your sling so they'll be super confused also the sentinel comes charged that is also really useful and the alternator and pk come with disruptor rounds which if you didn't know does increase shield damage and like i said before the mozam re and p20 come with hammer points which do increase flesh damage now the disruptor is a gold pop-up which means it won't come when you have slingshot equipped and you get to the purple tier just because disruptor is gold whereas hammer points is purple so you will get hammer points on guns that take the hammer point hop up the mozam re and p20 do so it's not only useful when you're in ult but it's also really useful when you're not in ult as well and then also the havoc and then the devo before it went into the care package comes with a turbocharger and the havoc i will just say is the best sling gun a lot of people have now clocked on to the havoc in season 21 being a really really strong gun i've been advocating for the havoc for over a year it is a really good sling gun so if you're a ballistic main i do recommend the havoc like i said the tier list which will be in the pinned comments is a more in-depth breakdown if you want to know my s tier basically of sling guns it is the havoc it is the rampage it is the alternator and re45 they are the best guns in my opinion for this link so if you want the quick and easy answer Go with those guns if i make a new and updated gear list video i will make sure to change the pinned comment so it should hopefully always be up to date with what my current opinions are what the current weapon meta and how that reflects with ballistic because ballistic will always thrive because if there's a good weapon meta ballistic can use it to his advantage so keep that in mind as well now finally let's cover playstyle now ballistic playstyle is aggressive but you need to be mindful of his lack of movement so you need to make sure you're wary of your position and you have good positioning in ranked i don't think he's the entry frag because of his lack of movement like a bangalore or a wraith or something like that but he's definitely the follow-up and i think ballistic is definitely one of those characters you can main and play both aggressive and play both in pubs and ranked whereas some legends you know are only really useful in pubs or fun to play in pubs and not really effective in ranked ballistic i do not think is that so if you want to play ballistic in ranked even though i'm not really much of a ranked player when i do play ranked i play ballistic and it is a lot of fun now something i mentioned earlier is i gave some bad advice in my last ballistic guide when i said you really shouldn't use the ballistic sling outside of the ult and i really think that's bad what i actually think of ballistic sling now it's like a horizon q or wraith q or pathfinder grapple equivalent because those characters can get away from a fight but ballistics three guns allow you to clutch a fight so think of it that way if you are wanting to be aggressive and push up you know a wraith player will do that because they know they can back out any second a ballistic player should know they can get aggressive because they can handle a fight a lot easier because they'll have three guns to use so it makes it even more important to choose the right sling gun because it just makes you even more useful if you want to get aggressive. And I think he is super, super overlooked. I really do. He's so fun and you just need to put in some hours and I promise you will see his potential. And I don't think there's anything that I have left to cover. I think I've pretty much covered all of Ballistic's tips and tricks. Obviously, if things change in the future, I will make another Ballistic guide. But from Season 21 onwards, this is how you should be playing Ballistic. Hopefully, you learned a thing or two from this video. You know, you can really experiment with Ballistic. You know, if you want, you can run triple of the same gun. You can try the AR SMG strat. You can try running triple shotgun. You can really experiment and get creative. I think it's fun to run triple guns sometimes. I really like using the AR strat. Sometimes I like using triple ARs if I'm feeling extra dirty, you know. You can really get creative with kits. So there's really no wrong way you can be playing him. If you have any tips that you feel like I haven't covered, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Help each other out. I'll make sure to be responding to all the comments I possibly can. And yeah, thank you everybody for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.